Hey everyone, in the news this week, sports news as cricketer Azim Rafiq apologised for anti-Semitic posts on Twitter days after he accused others of racism. It seems like in the end he was caught out, very much like when he played for Yorkshire. In business news, Preta Monje are apparently going on a hiring spree ahead of Christmas and are looking for people to fill a lot of roles. Get it? And in environmental news, Kerry Katona finally announced that her bank balance has achieved a net zero. But of course the big story this last week was out of America, specifically Kenosha, Wisconsin, after Kyle Rittenhouse was acquitted on all charges and it seems like the only people going to jail are those who immediately started rioting and setting fire to things and showing their discontent by going to the Apple store to protest the verdict by stealing a MacBook and maybe some Nike shoes while they were in town. For those who didn't follow the story though, here's a brief rundown. Last summer there was a large Black Lives Matter protest in Kenosha following the shooting by police of an African-American man called Jacob Blake. The protest of course very quickly turned violent and Kyle Rittenhouse meanwhile was visiting his father and took a rifle with him when he went to defend a car dealership. A number of protesters subsequently attacked him and tried to beat him and shoot him to death. Shots were fired on both sides though and in the end Kyle was alive but two of his attackers weren't because apparently Kyle was a good shot whilst they had more trouble shooting than Windows 95. Kyle was of course subsequently arrested and the court case began over whether he acted in self-defense or not. The jury decided this last week that yes, he was within his rights to shoot back at people who were firing guns at him. The case seemed pretty black and white really, but ah, black and white, therein lies the racial lens that stories like these are reported through these days. The actual verdict in the case came as a surprise to nobody if they'd actually followed the facts. There was video footage of what happened and the star witness even admitted that he raised his weapon first. The case up until that point had largely been a real life version of that Star Wars argument about whether Han Solo shot first or Greedo. Except this being America, it's of course unclear which side is more vocal. Star Wars fans are left-wing political activists. To many, a court case like this shouldn't be about the facts, it should be about what they feel and be entirely based on emotions rather than determining the legal status of an individual incident. It should be solely based upon settling a broader political question and the news media spent the last year portraying Rittenhouse as the domestic terrorist akin to Al-Qaeda. To them, it was so morally important to convict him that MSNBC journalist was actually given a restraining order preventing him from going near the courthouse after he started researching the names and addresses of the jurors so that if they acquitted him, then he could then publish everything online and let the mob enact their own form of vengeance, justice. Joe Biden, still then running for president last summer, even used an image of Rittenhouse as part of a campaign video denouncing white supremacy and is now talk that he could actually be sued for defamation. I guess it's not a proper court case though in the States unless someone's being sued for millions of dollars. Although Biden may of course have the last laugh if he settles in five years, hands over the money, only to point out that thanks to his hyperinflation, $20 million no longer buys you much. For me though, the most American part of this story is the horrific corruption and nepotism in small town America. The mayor of Kenosha, John and Tarimi Anlet let the town burn in order to achieve his own political ends. Meanwhile, his cousin Ed is the city's district attorney. His nephew, Michael, is the Kenosha city judge, and his other nephew, Tip McGuire, is the state representative. Oh, he's also got another cousin, Laura Belsky. She's the county board supervisor. And that's insane. It's like something crazy out of a TV show or movie. Maybe they'll make a movie out of the Carl Rittenhouse story, but just be careful telling someone you're looking for shooting locations, especially if you intend to hire Alec Baldwin in the role. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, please subscribe.